All right, cool. So, hi everybody. Welcome. I am Ryan J. Downey with Spring Crusades and NotFest.com. Uh, I have with me some of the fantastic cast from the new film Alive. And uh, why don't each of you introduce yourselves and then uh, we'll start talking about this movie. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Don't all of you start at once. <laughs> Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Thomas Cockerell. I play the, the male patient in, uh, in this film Alive that we shot about three years ago now. Wow. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Camille Stops, and I play the female patient. And I'm Angus McFadden. I, I play the doctor. And having, and having seen the film, I'm now terrified of you, even via Zoom. So you got Excellent. that going for you. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I always find fascinating about films that use this, the, the narrative device of, you know, protagonists that are unsure of their identity and environment and location. And when you kind of, when you start films that way, how do you best push this kind of movie on your friends without giving too much away? I always find that that's the, I ran into this recently with the movie Annabellum also, uh, where, you know, there's, there's secrets that you don't want to spoil, but you also want to make sure that people watch it because it's, it's, it's a great ride, you know? So uh, what have you found has been your, your go-tos when you're telling even friends and family about this movie you made without giving it away? What do you, what do you, how do you, if each of you could tell me how you explain it, what your, your pitch is, so to speak, to your pals. Camille, why don't we start with you first, because you're, you're on the top of my Brady Bunch square. Okie dokie. Um, this is, I think this is my pitch. Uh, I would describe this movie uh, as a, two, a man and a woman wake up in a hospital, and they don't know who they are, where they are, or what's happening. And basically, it's their quest to find their identities and to figure out what this situation is. And I leave it at that, really. Um, and if it's somebody that, uh, I have a lot of friends that I'm gonna say uh, are a little skittish with horror films or psychological thrillers. This is, um, I'm gonna say this leans more towards the psychological thriller aspect, although there's some blood, it's not like gratuitous or, um, yeah, it really impacts your mind. That's what I say. I just say it's a, I just say it's a modern, modern day Frankenstein type oh, movie. Interesting. Yeah, it yeah, does have some of that, that archetype motifs yeah. going in it. Yeah. Um, how about you, Tom? I, yeah, I probably went too far. I said it was just a, a guy and a girl that wake up in a hospital and they, they take care of their doctor um, when they want to leave. They're not knowing anything, of course, waking up, not knowing who they are and, and what's going on when they feel well enough and they're ready to leave doesn't want to let them leave and i say it's a bit of a, a cat and mouse in a in an abandoned hospital nice i you know i i love that convention and it's and it's not as though it's one we see a lot but when we do see it done it's always exciting to me um i just watched uh the film death of me and that movie begins with a man and a woman uh they wake up and knowing who they are but having lost uh, the last like 24 hours or so and not knowing what happened or how they ended up where they are and, and that sort of thing. And, and it has a similar sort of race to uncover the clues about what's, what's happening to them or what might happen to them. And this is in a totally different environment than that and, and manages to have uh, a different tone and a different pace, I think, even than, than similar sort of setups. Uh, what was it about the story idea, the, the script, that attracted each of you to this? I think just, I across your desk. just on that note before, I think that concept of an amnesia and, not, and the not knowing the past and how to move forward is, is, is a great setup for a thriller. And I don't think, I mean, in my experience, I haven't seen it much. I mean, apart from the, the Bourne series and that's, that's his, uh, his journey is finding out who he is and these people chase him and not knowing not knowing your past, but I haven't really seen it too much. Um, yeah. And that was the, the real job for us is 
as actors, you do all this background work, you know, like, this is who I am. That's the, I mean, the job is to, to understand your character and your past and where you've been to be able to move forward. Uh, I guess it was a, <laughs> it was a joy not having to do anything like that. You know, it was just every day was, was a new experience and we could just approach it, approach it in that way. Camille, how about you? What was your uh, attraction to this when you first heard about mm -hmm. it and first read about it? Um, I came on to this, I don't know, three days before is when I got the script. And um, I was out in Vancouver. So things were very quick. It was a lot of quick processing. And my uh, first impression when I read it was, oh my God, this is, uh, this is gonna be living in such a heightened emotional situation for so many days in a row shooting. This is gonna be flipping exhausting. Um, that's what I, my first impression was. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna do this. And then just on a plane and then they're shooting. So there was no time to think, which was probably beneficial to yeah, the situation. Yeah, that's great for the whole premise. Yeah, you don't yeah. know much about your character and you're thrown into the situation. Exactly yeah. where your character is. I thought the complete opposite, stupidly. I read it and I was like, oh, they're in a bed the whole time. I was like, this will be a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh my it's God. Gonna lay, there it's going to lay there for the whole movie. I'm so, so yeah, wrong. A lot of like <laughs> I have to say that I felt so sorry for both of you every day coming to work because I would just saunter in five minutes before and slip on my gown and no, no hair, no makeup, and just. Uh, and show up and these guys have been like two hours already in in makeup and they're like completely covered in red sticky goo and oh, like, would stay in that all day and it was just like i really did feel i really had a, a, a tremendous sense of compassion for you guys which was kind of difficult because there i was playing this complete monster <laughs> who doesn't give a shit about anybody so so i think i had the hardest job of, of everybody it was just uh, trying not to weep for you guys <laughs> well, well, yeah, well, you know, actively looking and, and for the in the back of my mind, reminding myself never accept a job where you just have to be covered in red blood all day because it's just like it's horrendous to get on and then get off yeah. and like you know, it's yeah. it's just disgusting. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> A Nightmare on Elm Street is my favorite horror film of all time, and obviously Robert England made multiple movies, and there was a TV series, and he did all kinds of promotional appearances. And yeah, when you when you speak with him, which I've had the great pleasure to be able to do a few times, you know, had he any idea about how much time in the makeup chair he was signing up for, <laughs> you know, like to just sit, sit there hour after hour after hour and have all of that put on. And, you know, it, it's, yeah. uh, it, it's quite a commitment, especially, you know, for films like this that require, you know, real effects and real prosthetics and fake yeah. blood. And, and, and a huge part of job on this too is the, the continuity mm. of those of those bandages because we don't yeah. start bloody and you know, like all film it's not shot in sequence so we had to you know we'd start some days at the end of the film and then have to go back and clean up and rebandage and and find a way to match what we were doing in in other parts of the film so that was also uh, another another hurdle angus where do you feel that the doctor fits in into, you know, sort of the great pantheon of, I mean, you mentioned Dr. Frankenstein. Um, you know, when we think about these titular sort of torture maniac um, villains in, in the genre, uh, where, where do you feel that the doctor fits in? Which, which, which sort of archetypes would you say he uh, would be comfortable around? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, I'm, well, I'm thinking, you know, you have your, uh, fitting around. You, well, you, have, you have your, let's say, calm, silent, uh, stalker type slasher killers, your Jasons, your Michael Myers. You have your, oh. your witty, uh, nightmarish Freddy Krueger. And then, of course, you know, throughout classic literature, as you mentioned, Dr. Frankenstein and, um, you know, all sorts of, uh, of, of the different maniacs that fans oh, of the horror yeah, okay. genre have seen. What was your approach to? Yeah, I suppose he's like a control freak you know the the that he doesn't he said this is the deep insecurity inside him you know uh, i think there was at some point we were almost discussing that he himself had maybe been put together by a previous doctor and that he himself Ooh. was was the was the product of of something which uh, an experiment 
and now you know he was continuing that in that sense of you know that everything is is, is a cycle you know violence is is a cycle so so that was the, the the idea to try and give him some sort of psychological reality you know so that you're not just um playing something which is you know you don't really know um a lot about certain characters like uh the, the characters you just mentioned they don't necessarily have a psychological realism they just mm -hmm. exist because they're they're um evil you know personified mm -hmm. yeah and Whereas so like, i think he's more realistic than that somewhat. yeah and it sounds like there's a great pitch in there for a uh an alive prequel <laughs> maybe in graphic right. novel form or some other medium um yeah. of, of how uh the doctor ended up where he was and, and who he was that, that's pretty fascinating now you guys mentioned before we jumped on uh you know it's been a few years since production wrapped on this film and of course you know given the pandemic and so on and uh you know a lot of movies being postponed and rescheduled and all of that certainly this is a bit of a longer wait than you would have anticipated um have you all had a chance to see the finished film yet yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> i don't know if i've seen the final um the cut that they're currently releasing i'm not sure right. about that but i did see it at a festival when it came to my home city toronto oh uh, yeah uh, yeah i went and uh, saw that there yeah and that had it been i uh, think that was when i saw a version i saw a screener or something Mm -hmm. and, and, and having I'm had, not sure if it's the one having had so much distance from the production of the movie to the release of the film um when that happens do you find uh, you know new things about it or things that you wish you might have done differently or you know do you second guess things do you have a different perspective on the whole thing i'm, I'm always curious how that i think it's like you, you you have problems actually remembering <laughs> You're right. anything because it's been three years and we're all like like, I think that's why there's these pauses, because we're actually trying to remember what went down and like what we were thinking at the time and all of that, because it's been quite a long time. And, you know, it's not like, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, Camille, you have some notes, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Do you need, what do you need to know? Do you want to remember about the uh, safety pin holding your glasses together? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I still have I that. Th I think watching, <laughs> Do you still have that? Yeah, I still have the glasses. Or maybe these are a new set, but they're being held together with a piece of tape right now. Because it's, <laughs> a, you know, quarantine still. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I think that it's hard uh, when you're removed by a couple of years and like this work that we do as actors that's on screen and now exists. And it's something you did three years ago. And hopefully as a human, um, you're continuing to grow and as an actor you're continuing to grow so I think whenever you're in a situation that you're watching old work you kind of feel like eh, I don't know that was then like and yeah. you're, you're moving forward and uh, onto new films and with this one for me I feel um, like it has a very special place in my heart uh, for shooting it and working with these guys and the collaboration of it all um, and I mean, my work's just changed and I've kept going on my life journey. Maybe that's a little convoluted, I don't know. No, but. that makes perfect sense. That's how I would imagine it to be, having not experienced, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Making something and creative and then cool. not sharing it with the world for three years. I mean, that just always sounds like kind of a fascinating relationship to the art that you've made you know but it's right. i mean you know a lot of painters finish the painting and then someone sees it the next day or a band finishes an album and they're these days you know putting it up on spotify two weeks later or whatever you know so the this idea of like you you put all this into your performance and then no one sees it for three years it just it, i don't know it's fascinating and you don't know what shots they used what choices they used Rob used to get, I remember Rob, the director, yelling from behind the camera, like for me to do it on a whole range of ways. So like we'd start doing a scene relatively um, relaxed and we'd kind of amp it up. And it would be at a point at the end of it where it was like um, really, really effing intense. 
I'm not up a lot of swearing on these things. Ever. Oh, you are. It's it's not it's not fest.com. We we swear all the time. <laughs> My gosh. Yeah. Um. So you have you have very little um idea of what the end product's gonna actually be like. I don't know if that's different for you guys, like Angus, Tom. I don't know. I'm always like, who knows what they chose? I there was a lot of different sh shit in there. Yeah. yeah, I heard that. That shit. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> I think watching it back, I I felt I I had like a physical instinct to just how tough it was. Physically, it was just it was grueling for for Camille and I, and it was freezing, and that hospital was empty and just as cold inside as it was outside, and we were barely wrapped up and um and the 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 it was it was a tough physical shoot but that i mean that's the joy that's the joy of this of this game and we we had so much fun doing it because we're running around screaming and and um and Camille and i really had way more fun than than you'd even realize watching it i remember this this one day when I I had a really simple line. We're walking, running through one of the hallways, and we we find something. We find these these footsteps, and I had <laughs> two words I had to say, which was no way. I just couldn't. And I couldn't get the words out without bursting into laughter. <laughs> and I had to give the line to Camille because we turned the corner, and I'd see them, and I'd just be like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> And, Corpse, and like um, we shot that so many times tom every time every, we were just dying a uh, corpsing oh, is laughing. corpsing is like my favorite thing i've spent so many hours on youtube especially for some reason uh with the different ricky gervais shows him and stephen merchant when they get to corpsing throughout uh especially extras um i've watched this stuff so much time so it's even it's doubly hilarious to me to think about a film like this one that's yeah. tense and a psychological thriller and, and horrifying and intimate and small and the actors are corpsing <laughs> in the middle of those situations it was it was a, there was a lot of fun we really had a, a great time making it yeah do you remember um, that um... i was thinking that uh, that uh, the 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 there's there's an element of it which we've we of the isolation and the uh, that the characters went through, which we would understand so much better now uh, after the last <laughs> yeah. six months of what's been going on that, that, you know, uh, it's, it just occurred to me that that was an element of the film, which we, you know, we were doing, but you know, now it's like, Oh yeah. Oh, like those, those months when we were all stuck in a room for, for, you know, by ourselves for months that that's what that feels like. <laughs> sense of uh, anxiety and things which which is kind of interesting yeah we've all we've all been living our our private personal alive <laughs> for the last few months. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> i'm gonna say um there's another thing for me personally that uh, i got to experience after shooting this i had a concussion a really bad one about a year ago oh no and i got to experience and i still experience a little bit now i'm almost totally recovered but not quite and so the impact that i had on your brain and a brain yeah. state that's foggy and unclear and how you live through that and how you keep living through it is yeah. such a, it's such an interesting thing. And it's very hard to imagine without actually experiencing it. And so yeah. that's the thing that looking back, you're like, Oh, if I had had this experience as a human, yeah. I definitely would have applied it. Mm. Did I ever tell you got you guys about like three years before we did, that I was in Winnipeg and and I I was doing a western and I fell off the horse. The horse like threw me, and I whacked the back of my head and woke up ten minutes later. And for about twenty minutes, I had no idea who the people who were like acting in the movie with me were. They I said, "Where am I?" They said, "You're in Canada." I said, "Where's that?" I had no idea what wow. Canada was, what anything was, who I was, who these. It was like the freakiest. It's really terrifying amnesia because mm -hmm. you literally you've been wiped clean and it's a really terrifying thing. That is terrifying. Talk about that? And, and, and then to think about it being a, a, a period movie that you're making <laughs> as things start coming back to you, then all of a sudden you might think like, wait, am I so is this the, am I in the old west? <laughs> yeah, <I'm not. laughs> 
yeah, who am I? Like, who are the, and they were all going, Angus, are you okay? And I said, I, said, I don't, I don't, who, who are you? Where am I? And they said, you're in Canada, in Winnipeg, you're doing a show. I said, where's Canada? Well, what is Canada? It was like, it was really freaky. Wow. I must have mentioned that to you guys. I think that it was early days. I think you maybe mentioned that, but it was early days. So for me, I have right. trouble uh, holding on to early days things because I'm just dealing with so much uh, my own anxiety or whatever. <laughs> I got to get out of my own way to be able to listen. Well, yeah. The, and, the, the, and the amnesia that's, that's happened to all of us about six months ago. <laughs> like, who am I? Where, where am I? What's happening? Um, so I would imagine shooting a film that is um you know a part of the tension of it is that it's claustrophobic um i would imagine that a movie like this is in some ways not unlike theater right like a stage play where it's a smaller number of actors and and locations um would you liken it to that experience as opposed to other movies and tv shows you guys have done or did this you know no because you're shooting out of order so it's mm. Not really. And you're shooting. You're not. You don't have three weeks rehearsal. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. Oh, yeah. Of course, we that day before where we we got to read the whole script with the three of us, which was which was really crucial. And that 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 I guess was a, a little closer to it. I think the only thing that that yeah. resembled was that it was a small cast and that it was just the three of us and we yeah you know, we got to work with each other and know each other very well. And we didn't have any, any extras. We didn't really, you know, work with, apart from yeah. bits at the, it was, it was just us. So um, that would be the only, only part that kind of likened it to theater, I think. Yeah. And also, didn't we get together, um, we got together every week to kind of work the next week's scenes, yeah. which was, yeah. which I don't know, doesn't usually happen. I'm going to say, especially on indie films, uh, you wouldn't be getting together on the Saturday to your day off to figure out what the next week was. But that speaks to, I think, the um, collaborative process that Rob, Jules, and Chuck all wanted and that we wanted to. Like Angus, especially for the doctor, you contributed a lot to um, how you felt like he would be in those scenes and um, to be able to improv and uh, put your really your own voice in there, which I think is to your credit in the end performance and why it's so like it kept us really on edge because you never quite knew what was gonna come out in a scene with Angus, which was awesome. Yeah. Thoughts, Angus? <laughs> I'd love to hear your take on that. Uh, no, I I think that's. I mean, I I now I, yeah I do remember we would we would. Uh, because it, the, the load was so heavy uh, each day that it was just the three of us. There was no time, um, really, and uh, you know to, to uh, you know to so the weekends were taken up um, by by, and we did quite. I think we would do like six hours or something, well, we whatever it took to get that the the, the next week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to, because, because, and I think it's because we were so much shooting, we were shooting out of order, weren't we? As much, uh, quite a lot of it was out of order. So it's, it's really difficult to, to you got to get your head around where exactly you are, especially with a script like this, because it's so, I mean, the, you know, I think mostly I had all the lines, but you guys had all of that physical, the, the physicality of, of where you're at at that moment and how much you've recovered and how well you can walk or limp or, you know, how much pain you're in. So, because, you know, you're, you're playing that, you're playing the reality of the, the, the violence as opposed to, you know, people can be hit over the head with a, a lead pipe and, and, you know, like it, uh, they dust it off like it's nothing, which is more like a superhero film. So, so, so that reality to, to get that is so important or to sell the the um the tension of the the film so it was really about exactly where are we at that moment and what's going on and how and also for for you guys it was like how much do we believe this guy where are we at in in the trust thing here mm -hmm. and also i remember we we introduced that thing there's a uh, i said it would be interesting to to the part of the plan was not that he wanted both of them to survive but that he wanted 
to split them and divide and rule that old tactic. And so he was going to use the male to, and turn her against him. And, and, and that she would become less human because she would eventually decide that he has to be, he has to be killed in order for us to move on. So it, was, it made it even more creepy in introducing that kind of stuff where exactly were we at that moment in that storyline and how, how much did she believe that she was going to do that or how much was she acting to cover up that she was not going to do that. And so all of that was, you know, the, and, and none of it was really spoken. So we, all, we had to really know where we were at psychologically, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, that was one of the hardest parts to really wrap your head around. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. What? How yeah, do I feel about you of, right now? Fun is <laughs> it's so yeah. um, right. Changing, changing, changing. Depending on what conversation, uh, say, uh, our characters, Tom and my characters, had had before that, or how what he, how he treated us, or what he Angus had given us. Yeah. How do we feel about it? And then, yeah, how damaged are you? That was hard to figure out some of that. Um, yeah, physicality because. It does have to get to a point. You do have to heal enough to be able to um, run. Yeah. You know? And yeah, yeah, and then how to do that. <laughs> Tom, Tom, I uh, just in my I was head. Lucky. I, was, I was lucky because I hated the doctor from the start and I was, I just knew, I, I knew it was wrong and my, my through line was pretty easy, but it, you did that so perfectly, Camille. You really, you did it so beautifully. And, and you see that, as, but there's, you know, there's a scene halfway through where you are on the fence mm. and your performance, when I saw it, was out of control. It's, it's so beautiful. And you handled it at, with, with such precision and, and detail. I, th I thought you nailed it. Yeah. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, and Angus, uh, you have also worked as a director. I'm curious how that, uh, does that experience um, as a director, how that informs your performance as an actor, you know, having, I guess, maybe a, a more well-rounded overview of the whole thing or, or, or do you know. keep the things really totally like separate? To, I like to just be immersed in the character and not try not to be on the outside, you know, so it's really nice when you can just hand yourself over to a director and trust them. Um, but, you know, sometimes that doesn't happen. So you, you find yourself, you know, looking after yourself so you don't get egg all over, you know, with the choices which are being, you know, you feel like you don't really feel comfortable doing something. It's, it's um, so, but, you know, uh, I think we pretty much had a very good um, rapport with, with, with a lot of us, you know, it was a very small crew. And as we said, just the three of us. And so, you know, we, we, and, 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 and what you find when you're doing films like this is you actually kind of need a lot of um, hilarity to ensue because cause it's all so dark and dank and seedy and there's all of these bits of corpse and, and you know, and, and it's all a bit like, it, it can like, you know, weigh down on you. So you try and like, like people are like, the, these two were kind of, like you two were both, both kind of mad over the three weeks. You were like running around like crazies covered in blood and they were like just laughing hysterically at everything and it was just like and like they they developed this sort of thing it was kind of it was kind of fascinating because i i guess it was what was able you to get through each day because it was those days were tough for you guys yeah yeah we, we had the tight. most hilarious time uh, <laughs> yeah. on set right like i think that even from breakfast, showing up to hair and makeup in the morning, we'd put on an album. I, we just started laughing. We would just start laughing as that blood continuity is going on, getting painted on, and the bandages are going on. Like, you're like, am I seriously getting into this again today? <laughs> like, did you guys not have the best sleeps of your life because you just expended all of your energy in like highs and lows and all over the map? You get home, you just be like, oh, Joey's and passed out. It was but it was, it was like just the nature of it. I mean, even though it can it get you down, it's, it's ridiculous to be, to be bloodied up like that. And you, you think you're fine. And then you walk past a mirror and you're like, what? who am I? What's happening to me? It was even a staircase that was covered with blood. And I remember Camille and I had to run up and down it and we got halfway up and then our feet got stuck and we practically <laughs> got 
of the staircase and we couldn't <laughs> move anymore and we'd be like practically sawn off it to to <laughs> to be free it was just it was crazy it was so funny mm -hmm. And um, before we do the running through the hall scenes, if they were really scary ones, Tom would usually scare me beforehand. I would try to scare him, but I never successfully, I don't think, did. Um, but he'd scare the shit out of me. And then they'd be like rolling and I'd be like, holy fuck, just running. So it was really um, a, a lot of fun. But very, you're just living a really heightened emotion. So you're swinging like constantly into like madness and then tears. Like that's, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, lo I love those kind of stories from behind the scenes too. Because it reminds me of uh, in Scream, one of my other favorite horror films of all time. Uh, there's a great anecdote about Drew Barrymore, who of course is in the opening scene of that movie. Uh, mm -hmm. She's a big animal lover as I am. And apparently Wes Craven would tell her real life stories of animal cruelty in between takes to keep her crying hysterically. <laughs> to get oh, wow. through that, that first scene, and uh, yeah, I think I think fun scares of each other is probably a little less sadistic than that. Uh, but I do always appreciate those those bits of uh, motivation and and how you get yourself there emotionally when you have to be getting there over and over and over to get the job done. Um, wow. Camille, you mentioned putting on music, which segues perfectly into one of the last things <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about. Um, what were you guys listening to on set? And are all of you or any of you the kind of actors that, that put something in your earbuds to get psyched up or play something in the makeup trailer? Or, you know, was there, was there music happening? And if so, what was it and how did it help? I can speak to, um, I use music a little bit in my work. It depends. Um, but I do find that uh, depending on where my mental state is just as a human that day, sometimes I find some music is really nice to just set you into a certain emotional state. Um, I had a, I think I was listening to some, uh, a dear friend of mine had gone through a really, really, uh, difficult, tragic event in his life. And some of the songs that I'm going to say I associated with um, him, I was like, I was listening to a little bit just uh, when there were some pretty difficult scenes. Mm, I'm not going to speak to what he went through and stuff, but yeah, yes, I use music. And then Tom and I used music in the <laughs> makeup room, but that was just for fun. That was probably we, to ignore getting played, into the um, cool off at the end of the day because we were going crazy, but. Um, I, I use music a lot too, and I remember being a little frustrated, if anything, on this, that I couldn't, because of the nature of it, we were tied up and in beds, and I couldn't, I like to really pop an ear, ear butt out right before going into a scene and, and, and carrying that through. Um, but for, for this, I listened to a lot of like heavy rock. I felt like this guy was, was lost and came from an angry past, and he couldn't understand it, and that, that helped me uh, carry him through. But I remember not really being able to use it much and having to, to, to you know, rely on other things just because of the nature of the, the job and, and not being able to, to listen to it, being tied yeah, to the bed. Yeah, you were tied up so much of it. You were, I was less tied than you. So I guess I probably had more access to my head. Way less tied. Bit. Like, you were tied up so much. Uh, I mean, is it, without giving away the, the film is that there was a day when I couldn't have my mouth right and and something happens and I didn't have access to my mouth for a, a few hours oh, it was yeah. like well, seven hours when I, I couldn't um talk and weren't we trying to like bust you up day, laughing the day. and I remember I had a <laughs> I had an appendix to write notes to to rob the director if I, if I wanted to talk about it. and I love talking about a scene and about what's happening and that day I just couldn't and then I'd be, I'd be tied down and I'd want my notepad and trying to like tell people with just my head and, and they were like, oh, more water. And they'd stick a straw in my mouth. And I was like, no, I want my notepad. Um, but it's all part of the magic, you know? You know? And we were able to like poke you and do all kinds of things and you couldn't do anything. Um, you could like, you could say anything. like yeah, yeah, like try and like uh, make fun of you and like, try and get you to yeah. laugh and you couldn't. 
And Tom, I got to ask you, uh, I mean, it's not fest.com. You know, uh, we cover a lot of bands in our family of bands like Slipknot and Lamb of God and Megadeth. And so when you say heavy rock, I got to ask you for specifics. What are some yeah, I, I, would, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I knew this would come up and it was actually <laughs> just a Spotify. It was a Spotify playlist. I just went into like, you know, heavy rock and, and skipped through stuff. Because I don't, I don't really know much of it myself. I'm, um, uh, you know, classic, classic rock, more 60s, 70s stuff, and the heavy metal stuff isn't isn't something I I know. So I, I was kind, it was kind of um, a nice um, opportunity for me to hear stuff mm -hmm. I I didn't know. I think that's the, that's what you try to do. I think if mm -hmm. you listen to stuff that you know too well, even if it has an emotional connection to you, but this was an opportunity to, to work, step into a world that I didn't know, and that's why I. I um, that sort of stuff. And it speaks volumes to the importance of Spotify playlists these days, which is like yeah. much more important for bands to get on the right playlist than it is to get on the right radio station. And this is mm -hmm. exactly why. Yeah. Awesome. I feel like our characters had to live through, um, I don't know what the band's name is, but you might, Ryan. Um, you know that song, It's Just One of Those Days? <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> like yeah that, that's like yeah. what our characters perpetually had to live through. <laughs> it was just one of those days. <laughs> is that what it's called? Um, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it's, uh, I think the song is called Break Stuff, but yeah, that's the Break line. Stuff. Yes, that's yeah. what it's called. Yeah. I was, I was saying your movie was just one of those days <laughs> for the well, actors and the yeah. characters. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, the, lastly, while I have all of you here, and it's been lovely to talk with each of the three of you, um, why don't you tell me a little bit about what we can see you in next, either stuff that's been finished that has yet to come out or things that you're gearing up to work on if and when work resumes <laughs> forever in the world. Um, what's, uh, what's coming up for each of you? We, Tom, we can start with you because you, you've moved to the top corner of my Brady Bunch square right now. So. Ooh, moved up in the world. In Hollywood uh, Square is you're the winner. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad I got to do uh, this film when I did. I, I, I've never really worked in the genre before, but I did another film last year, uh, a sequel of Escape Room, Escape Room 2. Um, so I shot that uh, last year, and that should be coming out, I think, early next year. Um, and then I've, I've just moved to, to New York. I'm actually in quarantine for, for two weeks at the moment. We're about to start shooting... Uh, it's a it's a period show for HBO called The Gilded Age by the uh, the Downton Abbey creators. Oh, nice! Downton. I believe it or not, I love Downton Abbey. <laughs> I still haven't seen the film. I saw every episode of the of the show, but I still need to. It reminds me, I still need to watch the film. Yeah, it, I mean, he's there's a currency to his work that that um, you know it's very detailed, authentic period. Um, and it's, it's pretty cool. The research stuff that we've done and the background work on this has been pretty, pretty exciting. It's about the high, the high life of, of New York in the 1880s. Um, yeah. yeah. So a little earlier than Downton Abbey, but, but before Downton Abbey, same creators, but, uh, way, way before Downton Abbey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, Angus, how about you, sir? Okay. Uh, well, I had to film uh, Robert the Bruce, which I spent 13 years trying to get made, which finally did get made. And that uh, released uh, 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 on streaming this, uh, this summer. So that's out there. And, um, and I've got, uh, I directed Macbeth uh, yeah, a few I years back, which I'm finally getting, out. I'm hoping to get out there this year. I'm just in post-production now. Nice. Um, maybe a Western, but you know, it's just really tough right now for Indies because, uh, they want to, you know, they want bonds for uh, insurance purposes because of this whole thing. And that's just extremely expensive. So, yeah. you know, it seems to be slowing up a lot of stuff going on. I gotta give, give a shout out to Macbeth as that was, uh, for me as a teenager, that was the first Shakespeare that I ever really connected with. And, you know, I'm sure it's the goth sensibilities and the supernatural elements and things like that. But, you know, Shakespeare seeming like something that was very uh, foreign, you know, literally and figuratively to me, a kid growing up in Indiana, to then right. being presented with Macbeth and going like, oh wait, this is cool. <laughs> this is, 
this is badass. This is like uh, yeah. dark and uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, depth yeah. into the themes. Everything that was a nice doorway for me to then get into, you know, other things of that nature. So and it's awesome. You do. That's one of those stories that's told and retold, and it's always exciting from different angles and the different ways that it can be told. So I think it's it will be getting made forever. I hope. Yeah, I'm sure uh, it will. Camille, how about you? Interpretation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Camille, how about you? Um, I haven't worked in the genre again since Alive, but it's something that I definitely would really like to do. We, you know, it's exhausting, but it's a lot of fun. And um, I did really appreciate about this film that the character I got to play wasn't classic female horror victim, mm -hmm. which I don't know how interested in that role that I would be, but... Yeah. Uh, you know, and something that has some strength and uh, stuff like that, that's uh, very appealing. Um, yeah, and I've shot a couple of indie films that are still in post over the last couple of years, and I'm currently in Ottawa. I'm about to go to camera on a Lifetime movie, so nice. that's going to be, uh, <laughs> oh, cool. that's gonna be yeah, a Yeah, that rocket. room you're in looks a lot like the hotel we were in in Calgary. Does it? Uh, yeah, it's a it looks, rental townhouse. Everyone in Ottawa has townhouses. Uh, it just reminds me of the of the the room that we would rehearse it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, uh, I was like, yeah. wait a minute, are you back there? Imagine, I'm like, I'm back at the Eau Claire. Room. Yeah, I was gonna, say, I was gonna say, if you are in a hotel, don't say the name of it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just Ottawa, general. Yeah. Bunch of horror fans watching this Q and A. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> where, where is that again? Yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, uh, this film will have a nice dark. I'm not gonna say twist, but it'll be dark. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Hey, you know, Lifetime movies can be dark. I mean, you know. There's it lot, is. There's a lot yeah. of wives killing their husbands in those movies. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Will that be me? I don't know. Hmm. Um, well, guys, thank you so much, all three of you, for uh, zooming in with us here and letting us Thanks. get this Thanks. Q and A out to the world for people to hear more about the experience of making this movie. Uh, whether they've just watched the film or whether they have yet to, I think they'll they'll get something out of hearing from the three of you. So, thanks so much for joining us. Cheers. Over at Not Fest. Thank you. Camille, Thomas, thank you. It's been great to see you guys again. Hey, yeah, great first. to see you too. And I love, uh, you know, there you both are in your, in your hotels at work. I'm still stuck in, in, uh, in Panama. We can't leave. We can't. There's no flights yet. We're stuck in quarantine six months now. Wow. That's I, wild. I, I haven't left this island for six months. I feel like I'm in Papillon. I'm going to like put the coconuts together and try and like, swim away from Devil's Island. <laughs> oh. That's a film At I'd least watch. you're in a um, tropical area, you know? Yeah, I get to go it, to the beach. Like, uh, Canadian winter, I am not looking forward to. It's going to be right. hard. And yeah. Uh, yeah, but I'm allowed to move around the province and work. So yeah, I feel for you. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks so much, Ryan. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was great to uh, virtually meet each of you and hopefully we get a chance to do it in, in real life someday. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that'd be yeah. fun. This is the facsimile for now. <laughs> we're, dealing, we're, we're playing the hand we were dealt. Um, yeah. Well, thanks so much. Have a great rest of your day and uh, everybody check out their movie a lot. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye guys, love ya.